And I want to again reiterate, fuck Nintendo. They've somehow found more interesting and creative ways to just be hated. They made this game at a full $60 price, even though it's just ports of old Mario games that are decades old. Joy-Con Drift. There's no way I'm spending $50, nigga. Nintendo sent spies to literally spy on him. Get the fuck out of here. Time and time again, the first major discourse you usually see when you catch wind of a new fan game project is, I wonder how long this will stay around. If you're like me, Nintendo would have played a good part in your childhood gaming life. You would have spent a good amount of time racing in Mario Kart Wii with your family, or finding each and every secret in New Super Mario Bros. And also, if you're like me, your kid self truly believed that Nintendo was the family-friendly, pro-fun company in the video games industry, doing things better than the rest of the competition. Unfortunately, some things are too good to be true, because family-friendly and pro-fun are the opposite of what Nintendo stands for, and many fans have really had enough. But before we get into the situations of fan games and console hacking. Let's start with something more well known, their online system. Some of Nintendo's products and services are severely lacking in features and their online service is no exception. You go onto the Switch homepage and find that there are no basic chat functions for talking to your mates. You can't normally voice chat unless you use their weird mobile app and even then you can only use it when you're on the actual game itself, if the game supports it. Luckily we have Discord for communication, but if you've met someone on a game and they don't have their Discord tag as their name, you can't do much about that. You might think that's not so bad, but it gets worse. The online connection on some of these games as I'm sure we all know now is absolute garbage mark of a top player Nintendo switch on oh, that should be cute <laughs> However, even if you don't have an online membership, you can still explore that silly little eShop where you can purchase all the $60 games that are years old and are almost never on sale to your heart's desire. To understand why these lacking features are a problem, we need to compare this situation with the other kids on the block. Xbox Live came with the original Xbox in 2002 and that had voice chat within the first few years of its release. And if we want to go even further back, Sega Net released the first voice chat compatible browser for the Dreamcast in 2000. A lot of you guys weren't even born at that time, I bet. The technology, although in its infancy at the time, has always been there for the longest time. They have the money to invest in it, but equally they know that people will continue to buy their shit, even though something like this is likely to happen. I'm sure you'll all remember that Nintendo has been using an 18-year-old multiplayer server system for all of its multiplayer games, and Splatoon 2 even has an unused function to check to see if it's running on Windows 98. <laughs> like, like, just imagine booting up your shitty 90s PC to play Splatoon hey, 2. powering it on. And it powers on. I don't think that's gonna cut it, Chief. Now don't get me wrong, having bare bones features would be okay if Nintendo Online was free like the good old days, when the features back then were also bare bones. To me, it seems like the vision they have for their consoles probably doesn't include voice communication and chatting. Some Nintendo games are the kind of games you play with friends or family only, and this vision is totally okay. But alas, you now gotta pay 18 quid a year without voice communication and chatting. Which in all fairness is a lot cheaper compared to the other main console prices. But Xbox Live Golf, for example, gives you free games every month, store discounts, and all the features Nintendo doesn't. Instead, Instead, what Nintendo gives you is some NES and SNES games while missing out on a lot of very nostalgic and critically acclaimed titles such as Super Mario RPG and Earthbound. Anyways, Nintendo isn't as evil as Kara, so they let you play third-party games online for free. But that begs another question. Why are you playing a third-party game on the Switch? Imagine waking up one day and thinking to yourself, oh yeah, I'm gonna boot up my Nintendo Switch to play some Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> No, you're not. I understand that I've been really harsh on Nintendo so far, and during the making of this script, there weren't any other virtual consoles available, but apparently that has changed. Could this be a rare good decision from Nintendo? Take a look. This is uh, the, the new controller Oh shit. my god, I have blocked him on Discord, I can still hear him. <laughs> yeah, I was very disappointed to find out. No, 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 watch, 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 watch. Oh. This is actually like important. Oh my god, if it... Oh, this is actually important. Let's do it! Yes. 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 No way, finally! Yes. That's actually- Oh, you can just play Mario 64 again. Let's go. Mario 64, let's go! Star Fox! Uh, Dude, that's actually good, what the fuck? Yeah, that's good. Did you play Mario 64? Yeah, yeah, I think no. you can play Mario 64, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can, and there's tennis. On Wi-Fi! Let's go! Bro, what? Yes! You have to pay extra for them. Oh, I'm not gonna come. No. Ah. Expansion oh. pack! Oh, oh you serious? No, 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 you can't be serious. They didn't include this shit in the package.
tickets are already no, you have to pay more. <laughs> Never mind, I should have known. It's Nintendo. Including extra consoles without a dumbass paywall is too good to be true. Once again, the emulators are calling, and I know you want it. Okay, as I was editing this video, the prices for Nintendo's online expansion was revealed, and <laughs> Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack adds the three benefits we previously introduced. Start <laughs> I need your strength to help me get through this bad news viewer. Give me your strength by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and all the other fucking buttons. Do not give Nintendo strength, they already have enough chroma. Why pay $50 for these games when you can get these games and more for free? Okay, back to the video. But seriously, it was actually really cool seeing them add N64 and Genesis games in the recent Direct. But adding a paywall, as we all know, is completely unnecessary. It's something they don't need to do by any means. This won't stop ROM sharing. The games are primitive as hell, boy. And I think they can comfortably afford to release games for these two consoles and more for free. If we take a look at the trailer for Nintendo Online, the like to dislike ratio is uh, pretty telling. Everyone knows this shit's a scam. Online didn't actually cost money back when Splatoon 2 came out, but Nintendo saw an opportunity for a quick yes. cash grab they didn't need, but knew they could get away with. It sucks because if you're someone that enters Smash Ultimate Wi-Fi tournaments, I don't know why you're doing that on offline returns, or want to play Mario Kart 8 with your internet friends, you have no choice. You have to buy the shit to play through a Wi-Fi tournament which is going to have lag in it no matter what. You have to pay for a shitty service to access a shitty part of a video game. So personally, I'd whip out Dolphin and play some Mario Kart Wii or Double Dash with some friends on Parsec. Because in summary, Nintendo Online gives you less games, less features, and less fun. I absolutely love how accurate this simile is. Now the next thing on my list, Nintendo's hardware, the piece of shit plastic you hold. It's so atrocious, man. Where do I even begin? They are so behind not only in the software department with their online features, you know, like I said, but the hardware department isn't much better. No LAN port. You have to buy a USB to LAN adapter, but don't buy a Nintendo official one. That one's overpriced. It's bizarre that you have to do this because once again, here comes Microsoft. The original Xbox had a LAN port. Bluetooth was updated into the system this year. Yes, Bluetooth. But beware the lag. And of course, Joy-Con drifting. We all know it. We all know about it. I suppose it's normal to have issues of a console within the first few months of its launch date, even though some issues really shouldn't be. But the Switch has been out for four years now, and Joy-Con drifting is still a very real problem, despite Nintendo dismissing it as such. And they also dismiss dead pixels as a defect, which is absolutely absurd. I mean, sure, black dots on a screen making it harder to see what's going on in your game is completely normal, and not a sign of dysfunctional hardware. It's painful to see Nintendo look the other way over such blatant issues. Joy-Cons ain't cheap either, at least for what you're getting. So if you can't get yours freely repaired, you're kind Done for. There are even drifting issues with the Pro Controller too, and all of this is apparently happening due to bad graphite pace, and happens way less frequently on other consoles because their graphite pace is of a higher quality. Hold on to your old Gen 7 controllers from back in the day, because that's the true way to game, not with this lifeless object. Instead of using resources to make their hardware better, Nintendo puts in so many measures into their console's firmware, and in the Switch's case, hardware, to try and stop anyone from modding or hacking the system. Here's an example. Switch's 7.0.0 firmware update included random lines of code in an attempt to slow hackers from getting into the system, I guess? I don't know, man. I'm not really good with code. It's been many, many years since I was connecting blocks in Scratch 1.4, you know what I'm saying? Making platformers that were worse than most Flash games. But anyways, four hours after the update, a hacker completely cracked it, which is so hilarious to see. It's like a big fuck you to Nintendo executives that approve shit like this. You can try all you like, but you can't outsmart us. Nintendo uses the Nvidia Tegra X1 chip to display the graphics for the Switch. There was an exploit found in the chip that let people install loads of different programs. Programs ranging from installing Ubuntu Linux and running games from different consoles like The Simpsons Hit and Run. No, this is pretty damn cool, isn't it? Whether you're against emulation or not, you can't lie, it's a pretty damn cool thing to see. You can be really creative with modding your Switch. Maybe you want to play some Simpsons Hit and Run on your way to the Norwegian Smash Tournament to Giga Bargain. Or play GTA San Andreas on a long coach journey to Vienna Challengers Arena. Isn't this a funny sight though? A GTA game on a Nintendo console? You gotta love it, man. Oh wait, it's officially happening. A crazy fantasy is so true. And you know what the best thing about this exploit is? The key difference between the software patch from earlier? Nintendo can't patch this issue because it's a hardware exploit. So we can mod our Switch easily for days, right? <clears throat> no. The fun zone ends here because Nintendo, being the sneaky little shit that they are, quietly released the revised Nintendo Switch model in July 2018, which absolutely thwarted the exploit. It's important to make clear though that hacking can be done nefariously, obviously, such as by selling hacking tools and anything else that is of harm, which is not a Unfortunately, even seemingly harmless hacks like changing your profile picture to almost anything you desire on your Switch will inevitably be abused because there are gonna be players who use this hack and change their profile picture for something.
something vulgar, and that did happen in this case. This is why we can't have nice things. That little incident nicely ties us into the next topic, fan creations, mainly video game mods and fan-made video games. This is because something arguably completely harmless, like an old ROM hack of a game, is not safe from Nintendo's anti-fun agenda. With regards to old ROM hacks, there was a situation in the past where a ROM hacker known as Pangea Penga had a majority of his YouTube videos DMCA'd by Nintendo in September 2015. The videos in question were tool-assisted speedruns of his ROM hacks. I'm literally showing you a gif of one of them because the videos aren't on his fucking channel, even though they had like a million views. Seriously, like what's the point of taking it down? This one guy isn't threatening your IP in any way. This is a guy trying to have fun with a game in a way that he sees fit, and for other people to take notice of too. It's not harmful to anyone, and the fun gang isn't gonna save us here. Sorry, Chris, Susie, and Rousey. Fan games are where the fun lies, and they are so damn cool. One rainy British day, I was putting up the good old YouTube recommended page to see what the fancy algorithm has picked up about me. I looked around and I spot something I can't believe I missed. A Nintendo Direct made by fans, showcasing video games made by fans. And a mod showcase. As I watched the video, the first thing I saw was the Beyond Melee mod, with new animations for the characters, other modifications, and fucking Melee Wolf. I was absolutely blown away. Okay, rocket test successful. Yeah. Shut up, I killed all my team. King. Oh, you can't be fucking. Okay, rocket test successful. That was a successful Shut rocket. Up, you you oh, look, look, I'm just practicing, mate. I'm practicing, mate. I'm practicing, mate. It's nothing to be like that, isn't it? The entire video was over an hour long, and according to my calculations with the help of Birdly, that's longer than a whole Nintendo Direct and takes up two mini directs. There's enough games in here to last us a while, and so much passion and determination went into getting these done. It would be a shame if something bad were to happen to them. I don't know, kind of like a cease and desist making them harder to access for the average user online unless you know where to look? Thank God that's not happening guys, right? If you'll excuse me, I'm just gonna pull out some of the fan projects Nintendo has killed over the years. Super Mario 64 HD, a PC version of the game created with shiny new HD graphics. Not this piece of crap. That was offered to you in the Super Mario 3D All-Stars package that was only released for a limited time to promote artificial scarcity, psychologically leading everyone to buy the game as quickly as possible. At a full $60 price. A full $60 price, even though these games are over a decade old. Yep, makes sense. Mario Royale. A browser-based Mario Battle Royale game where 75 players could battle each other while playing the classic Super Mario Bros that we all know and love. Despite the creator's efforts to avoid copyright infringement, Susan Today, resist. I have some bad news. Oh, and Nintendo made their own version called Super Mario Bros. 35. To celebrate Mario's anniversary of cease and desisting, Pokenet, an MMORPG of Pokemon. A pretty damn good combination. Well, that game got shut down as well. There are so many more I haven't listed that I'm sure you could look for yourself if you want to drown in even more depression when you see how horrible this company is. On the Project M subreddit, I found one post from some mad guy suggesting that we should ignore Nintendo's cease and desist lessons. Yeah, man, that'll work. Good luck trying that with some of your own made fan creations. Maybe you'll be the one that lives on. Yeah, no. It is beyond fuck that Nintendo chooses to take their IP so strictly even though none of these projects are harming Nintendo's brand in any way. All it is doing is harming the hard-working creative fans who bought the same games Nintendo puts out on the market. We all know by now that Nintendo is within their legal right to do what they do, but that doesn't stop them from being subject to criticism about how they use their rights to harm other people. And besides, some of the shit these guys work hard on is better than what Nintendo can put out. despite the fact that they have more than enough resources to put together a strong dev team. But wait, Nintendo's wrongdoings don't stop there. <laughs> okay, fine, they're never gonna stop, guys. But if I point out all of the wrongdoings out in the style that I do, we're gonna be here till Delta Rune chapters 3, 4, and 5 get released. So allow me to speed run like Pangea Penga, take down of OST channel. Nintendo removed a significant amount of videos from the OST channel, Gilva Sana, and fully took down another OST channel called Brawl BRSTMS3. Yeah, it's an awful. Nintendo does not upload any of their soundtracks online, and they could have copyright claimed it to make money off of it instead of removing it completely. Those two channels did not monetize their videos either, so this is about as anti consumer as you can get. This is also a bit inconvenient for me because I exclusively use video game music for these YouTube videos. Nintendo Ninjas. In December 2020, a massive leak at Nintendo happened. 
and in the leak there was a document of Nintendo Ninja spying on a hacker called Neymar in order to find out where he lives, works, his daily schedule, and more so they could confront him and tell him to stop hacking essentially. Although this dude was illegally hacking, sure, that's bad, it doesn't mean Nintendo needs to approach the dude in this way by logging every single thing he does. Have some respect for the man's privacy. I seriously doubt he was harming Nintendo too. The hacking scene, not to be confused with piracy, is way too niche for it to impact Nintendo's business plan. Have you viewers noticed a pattern yet? Most of the things Nintendo takes action against aren't actually harmful in any way. Who would have bloody guessed? Nintendo Creators Program. Before the Nintendo Creators Program was a thing, being a Nintendo YouTuber was next to impossible because everything got copyright claimed, even if it was a Let's Play. This changed with the Nintendo Creators Program, which didn't even need to be created because creators are, or should be, be protected under fair use and copyright law. Only a very small portion of creators joined the program, and getting a video approved through their system was a difficult process because if your video stepped out of line, it genuinely made me laugh out loud multiple times. I'm on it was not eligible. Nintendo and their relations with the Smash Bros. Uh, that's for another time. Maybe, I don't know. If I feel like it, and if you want to see it, let me know. To end this video off in good faith, I am afraid I'm going to have to drop the red pill onto you guys. And that red pill contains this. Nintendo is most likely not going to give up any of the practices I mentioned in this video. Although there is one exception I found of Nintendo making a good decision. Like I mentioned earlier, before the Nintendo Creators Program was a thing, being a Nintendo YouTuber was next to impossible because everything got copyright claimed. Nowadays, this is not the case and the Creators Program is a thing of the past. Thank God. And that is literally it. That is the only major pro-consumer decision I've seen from Nintendo in recent years. That being said, I have definitely missed things in this video, both good and bad that Nintendo has done. It's just way too much to cover in a reasonable amount of time, at least for me. In any case, Nintendo will keep online outdated, keep adding expansion packs when they see an opportunity, keep taking down fan games and turning them into their own, keep making shitty Joy-Cons with Joy -Cons partially because there will always be people buying into their rip-off services. And to be honest, I can't blame them. Nintendo has developed and published some of the great greatest games of all time, and the majority of consumers don't have the time or justification to think about these deeper corporate issues. I do, because I'm a bit sad, but many don't. For those that do have the time, me, some of my friends, and hopefully you guys watching, please listen to what I'm about to say. It might be the most important part of the video yet. There are a handful of things you can do to alleviate the issues that I've mentioned regarding Nintendo. For example, if you're someone that's willing to splurge dollars and dollars on streamers and YouTubers, then I'm sure you can fork over a couple of quid to fan creators, including but not limited to slippy emulator sites, modding teams, and so much more. Hell, you can support the people by making a fan creator direct part too, to continue on with the work of those guys. It doesn't have to be financial by any means. Who knows? Maybe you'll really enjoy a niche fan game out there like no other game you've played before. And believe me, that can really make a creator's day, or week, or month. Or maybe they'll remember it forever. Most of the things I mentioned are free as well. And come on guys, who doesn't like free stuff? To simplify these points, accept that you can't do much about Nintendo's shitty practices and make the most of what you can do for yourself. Apply this philosophy to many of your life's problems that are outside of your control and you'll do amazing. <laughs> Seriously. I really like Nintendo's library of games and I don't want to discourage or shame anyone for buying things like the Nintendo Online Expansion. You have the financial freedom to do that if you like. Please feel free. I just know that things could be a lot better than they currently are, where if something was done about these issues could benefit everybody. I mean, maybe not this guy, but almost everybody. <laughs> Anyways, I think I've said more than enough, and I'm fucking exhausted. If you made it all the way to the end, congratulations, you're amazing. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, follow, all that shit. Have a nice day. You gotta leave those worries on your shelf. Yeah. Uh -huh. Whatever happened to being yourself? I don't know. No. But tonight, let's lose control. Life ain't fun if you're all alone. I can get you anything that you want and more.